hello people, and welcome to the first episode of our new City Skylines 2 Let's Play series. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We are playing on the Great Highlands map with right hand traffic, and you can see my current settings on screen right now. Before we do get building, I'm actually going to dive in and do a little bit of terraforming. Uh, there's kind of a water inlet on this map that's kind of begging to be expanded into a wider river that I'm planning to run right across the other side of the map. So I definitely suggest doing some terraforming, playing with some trees before you do any building, kind of customize the starting tile to your liking. It definitely kind of spices the game up. But either way, we're going to plant some trees, a bit of terraforming, and then we'll get into building. So I'll catch you over there. So welcome everyone to our first ever City Skylines 2 live play. It's uh, incredibly exciting to be here, isn't it? What a road. Eight years of City Skylines 1 and here we are in our first ever uh, City Skylines 2 city. And uh, don't forget, you know, don't forget to give me name suggestions for the name of this city down below. I'm going to give you guys the honour of naming our first ever CS2 build, uh, just like we did with Orchid Bay. So get those suggestions down below. But uh, we're on Great Highlands here. And uh, I'm quite inspired to play this map. And then we're going to get started with some road network frames today. So in City Skylines 2, you can be uh, much more expansive with, the, with your initial road network frame because of how the milestones work now. But that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to delete this initial sort of highway configuration that they've got here. And my initial vision here is to have this couplet system extend straight through the middle of what I imagine will eventually become downtown here. Uh, across the river that I've terraformed in as well at the start of the video. Kind of see this little inlet here. I definitely want to try and link these two rivers together and kind of create this big scar that runs through the middle of the map. I think that might be quite cool. Uh, and then we can also hook in with the National Road over here as well. So let's get started. So I think initially I'm going to do a little bit of terraforming. Now, not too much. Um, I just want this level here to basically run up to the rivers so this couple system can go straight through. And then also level out what's going to be my downtown over here as well. Now, I'd like to do some key walls. Um, using the new kind of cotton fill feature here as we come down toward this little shoreline. So I'm going to try and accentuate those two layers uh, with a little bit of terraforming before we start. Let's make sure we're setting to the same height. So something like that should be roughly what I'm after. Let's increase our brush size here too. Is that really handy? I definitely recommend spending a bit of time doing some terraforming and some tree work and um, before you start building in Cities 2 because it's all free and available now. Uh, right from the start, it's allows you to be just so much more flexible with your terrain and your trees before you actually start building. You don't have to wait to like the fourth milestone now to unlock them. Fantastic. So that's going to be good for me. So let's open up our parallel road tool here. So I think with this parallel road tool, I'm going to set it to a two meter distance and it might be a little bit rough just for right now until we unlock those highway roads so we can reconfigure this entrance. But my vision is this will eventually be demolished to accommodate a four directional interchange, but that's a little ways down the, the line yet. So let's use our parallel road tool and I'm going to draw out my corporate system to just come straight out of these on a 180 degree angle. And that's going to be great for me I think. We're going to be happy with that. That's going to run straight through the middle of the map. Again we'll reconfigure this once we unlock those highway roads. Now let's come back with our snappings on as we begin to uh, cross the river here. So I'm going to come straight across ideally and snap into a 180 degree angle from where we start from. I want to pay attention to this gradient marker in the middle here because that's going to tell us how much the road is rising or falling. I don't really want to go above a degree, so we can get it to 0.6 there should be okay, I think. And we'll bring that right up to the map boundary and then we can plan that network to eventually flow over the hill and far away. And we've also got a national road down here as well, which I'm really keen to bring in. So let's come off the parallel mode and we'll do some freeform here as well. And let's just start meandering. A little road up here that's going to come toward our corporate system and then let's come straight across on an angle and connect in with the opposite side there i think that's going to be quite good so i'm going to terraform a little bit more of this land because i do want this to be like my downtown i think something that's going to change with our play style in cities too is that the initial start of the city here is going to grow in density as time goes on which is kind of very much true to real life you know and the town center receives the density first doesn't it rather than making the skyline elsewhere so the foundation of the city i think will eventually become one of our primary high density areas so i want the land to try and respect that idea at least anyway again with our two layers here now i want to bring these much closer together on the terrain change and then let's soften one out a little bit here 
That should be decent enough for me. So I'm going to bring a Chris Crossing Culprit system through here, and then we're going to come on to our freeform stuff. And let's get a little bit of a meander on here as we start to come down at this hillside. And then we're going to come down here, and imagine a lot of our initial industry is going to be positioned here because our wind direction, um, if we have a look, is blowing this way. So we want to make sure that our industry is essentially downwind from any residential, otherwise they're not going to be very happy with us because air pollution is now a mechanic. Uh, and then this couple of system can again crisscross with the other one and we'll send that on a 90 degree snap straight out the opposite side and that can continue over the hill and far away once it's ready to. Uh, so I'd also like another um, entry system here as well. So I think what we will do is kind of build a little roundabout system. So I'm going to come off of my couplet tool again, or parallel road tool, sorry. And let's go for, right here should be okay. Don't want it to be too close to this entrance here. We're going to use my curve tool here and I want to set up a 32 by 32 meter curve, I think. So straight across the road. And again, we'll do 32 meters. Make sure a grid snapping's off here if the grid isn't a hole. Cool, and then we can delete those middle two lanes. And then what we will do here is set up a little uh, road. So we don't lose these two sections when we delete them. Let's come straight across there, actually. There we go, then we can delete these two. Let's come back to that two lane road. And then we can use the new very flexible kind of swish road tools here to break some really nice slip lanes back into this roundabout. So that was a distance of 41 meters, wasn't it? See if we can replicate that on this side. 40 meters will be fine. And then let's flip that around again as well. That's going to give us a nice little roundabout system there, isn't it? We can delete these holding roads now to brace the frame. And I guess we could do the same here on this side as well, couldn't we? Again, we'll draw those bracing frames in. That lets us delete these roads. And then we'll just use continuous curve. Bring that in again. And hopefully 37 meters this time will be fine. We'll do 37 meters on this side as well. First those directions. And now we can have all that function like so. Cool. Pretty happy with that. Again, once we unlock those highway roads via the development tree, we can do some more interesting things with kind of lame maths here. Because the highway roads are a lot more flexible than the small roads are. Uh, and then I think the plan after this one is just to have two um, arterial roads peel off here. So let's go for probably about there, I think. I think that's what I'm after. And we could even hit the guideline of these roads up here if we wanted to. Something like that would be okay. And then I want to do that same thing over here again as well. Let's come off. Also onto an angle snap here. And then we'll bring this road straight the way, all the way down to eventually, I imagine, function as a bridge. Uh, crossing over this river to whatever's going to lie over here. But obviously that's a little ways away yet. Let's definitely kind of introduce some arterial connections back to the couplet system here. So we'll come straight down into this one. I'm not too worried about fractured zone in here, but I will try and bear it in mind where we can. So we'll make this hole, bring this one hole through here again as well. And then bring this one into there, should be okay. So I'm not bothered about fractures like this. You're not gonna be able to tell once it's zoned in. And then this should be mostly okay for me here. So I think we're gonna grab our two lane road here now and we'll just start making some uh, pretty solid kind of downtown grids because again a lot of our density will lie out here and when we unlock some apartment buildings we'll switch out some of the zoning uh, to accommodate those as well again let's try and maintain those grid shapes where we can So let's return to the idea of using some of these new kind of uh, key retaining walls now again we've got a big tutorial on the channel it kind of walks you through the very basics of this tool so if you haven't checked that out and you are brand new to city skylines i'd certainly uh, suggest you go and uh, watch that first i'll leave it linked down below as well um, in its playlist along with a load of other cs2 tutorials we have so let's deforest some land here because i want to just be able to see what we're doing so my initial idea here is let's come on to our Elevation step and I want to rise up to a distance of 3.75 meters here And I want to have this road so you kind of see this um back pavement here You see how it just peeks through the terrain 
that's about where I want to draw it. So just as it becomes visible, that's where I want to draw. And I want to have this go there initially. So it's going to give me that retaining wall on the bottom layer, but on the top I also have zoning opportunities, which is really what I want to try and achieve here anyway. Let's bring that up again. And that should be fine for me. And then we'll let this come down to about there, I imagine. And then we'll factor this in with the bridge and whatever's going to lie over here. Now, in terms of how we're going to hook this in, I think we will just manipulate the terrain so we can hook it directly into this couplet system. Uh, it should be fairly sensible to do here, actually. So we go ahead and grab that road again. And we can come back down at a distance of 9.75. And how much is that going to fall by? It's not too much, actually, is it? I don't think I hate that. I think it was a nice little layer as it kind of comes back down here, isn't it? We can get some trees in there, too. Probably even soften that corner out a little bit. Maybe get some pathways in there. Uh, and then that exact same process now on the, the opposite side of the terrain layer. So we'll just repeat that. Let's go ahead and accentuate the differences between the two layers again. And then we'll grab that road. Again, just want it so the that pavement or the sidewalk just becomes visible. And that should give us a nice smooth time drawing in those grid frames. And we can hopefully come back here now and connect in. That is giving us the cut and fill feature though, isn't it? Which I actually don't want to happen here. So just go ahead and soften that out a little bit. And then we'll just reconnect this one in and hopefully just straight down and into there. Although we do want that one to run for a little bit longer, I think, don't we? There we go. I think I'm more happy with that. And I don't want it to run the entire thing here. So let's actually terraform this up and we'll make this parallel with the couplet system. And then we'll kind of use this as the barrier for this terraforming here. And then we can have some industry down on this second layer. I imagine we'll probably eventually develop our industry all around the rivers here. Because we could bring a sea line out here, but it might be a little difficult for them. We'll probably have to terraform a lot of this out. But I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. <laughs> There's uh, many different possibilities we'll be playing with today. Then hopefully again, I want that gradient fall to be as minimal as possible. I think I'm going to be happy with that. And let's just push that up. So it's not poking through. Fabulous. And then in terms of what we're going to do down here, let's come back down to both our elevations and then we'll keep this going just like this and then we can create a new road snapping district here we'll get some industry down here all around the mouth of the river should be quite cool shouldn't it so use some of these alleyways here to develop some more zonable space and then we can have some industry over here now we'll do some uh, more medium density in parks over here so let's prepare some of those frames to come in Again, you're going to see how much road network prep you can do now right i'm probably going to spend about 100,000 before we've even hit play here today so we've got two different grid orientations here, which, which is fine. I don't, but don't particularly mind that. So let's create a crossing here. I'll bring that up there. Let's put that across. I'm just looking to create some zonable space here now around all these different frames that we've connected in. And I think before we connect to that one, what we will do is come out with this one. So yeah, let's connect that one through as well. Now we could also connect through onto that bridge there, which I think we will do. No, not bridge, I guess. So what, what, what are we going to call these? I think we need to decide as a community, don't we? Are these retaining wall roads? I think that's what we'll call them. Then if it's down on the water, we'll call it a key road. I think is the terminology we'll decide on here. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you guys are going to call them. And then again, just some more simple frames here where we can have some fun with kind of outer lying suburbia designs and different things happening over here uh, and then with this one I just want some uh, pretty generic just low residential frames so with low density residential um, the small the, the kind of smaller the lot is as in the actual physical size so a 4x4 or a 6x6 and um, this does actually affect the amount of rent that the person pays so I'm going to be after specific 4x4 zones here because I don't want them to be paying um, an enormous amount of rent so that's what we'll try and aim for, and we'll use these frames to support that idea initially. And you can just hook straight through into this couple system here, I think. I'm going to be happy with that. And then we'll do another one through there as well. So that's our initial road frame for right now in the start of Great Highlands. So let's go ahead and get some utilities down. So we could do wind turbines, which I think we will do. We can use them over here, can't we? How about, how about this side of the river? 
You know, is there a spot here where we can get five megawatts? There we go, yeah. Let's do that. And then, is there another five spot here? Oh, yeah, just about. Cool. So we'll do um, two wind turbines. Now we need to connect these into the power grid. Uh, so we want to come underground with our electricity cable. And we want to snap into these two together. And then we want to feed these into uh, the power grid there. So that gives us power. Very nice. Now we'll watch those spin around once we hit play. Uh, and now let's do our sewage as well. So let's go for the sewage outlet. So we want to pay attention to our direction of water flow here. And this wants to be out here, I reckon. So it's going to flow out into the ocean. We don't want it really pooling around our river here, which is already getting pushed down here, isn't it? So we'll bear that in mind. And again, we want to give this just a single sewer pipe. Let's connect that into our sewer network. Uh, we also want water supply as well. So we do have some groundwater deposits here. But again, this is going to be downtown. I don't really want my groundwater pumping station here. And I think a classic, classic OE staple, if I do say so myself, is the water tower in the starting roundabout, isn't it? So why don't we have that there? And again, we'll snap onto it and connect it into the pipe network, which is all under the roads now, thank God. Don't have to do that anymore. And how about that? We just have, that even looks like it could have a path connected to it, could it? I guess it could. <laughs> There's no reason why not, right? And I think we'll go for a couple little oaks around our water tower as well here. Maybe some cute trees and whatnot. Let's get some palavan pines in here as well. They will forever be known as palavan pines, by the way. Even though we're not in palavan anymore. Cool. But that right there, I think, gives us our initial starting layout uh, for Great Highlands. Which is to be named, of course, by you guys. Don't forget to get those suggestions down below. Well, that's not too bad, is it? Let's start doing some zoning. So for the first time, let's hit play together. And we can now hopefully see some people actually move through the city. Because, of course, we've got the National Road Connection in Great Highlands. So you will be able to make use of this to actually get out of the city if they decide to leave the main national highway. But again, my eventual vision here is to demolish this interchange and continue this arterial coupler system on and around here to probably not go up the mountain, but maybe probably around the base of it towards this sort of area over here, around this coastline eventually. But uh, let's do some zoning. Of course, we'll pay attention to our demands down here, uh, at least for the start of the game, just to get everything set up. So let's come into it. So we're going to do some uh, low density housing. So I'm going to use my marquee tool here. You can also press I as well to remove the um, heat map overlay if you don't like it. I know a lot of people don't enjoy the kind of brighter color. Again, I'm after those 4x4 zones here, so let's go for that one. So some might grow on the side, but that's okay. And there's our tiny village one, awesome. So we've got our first milestone. Uh, so that's going to give us uh, medium density housing already, which is really helpful. And we get a bunch of money for that as well. Uh, some city stats and city budget, but nothing majorly impressive right now. So we'll carry on zoning up that low density. Again, looking for those back to back. So once they've come in, I can go ahead and zone up the next grid there. And then we'll also do this one as well. And this one here too. So that should be fine right now. That's going to grow over time. Now we've already got some medium density row housing demand as well. So let's go ahead and start getting this in. Now I imagine we'll probably have this more over this side. So again, I'm going to stick to uh, those smaller lot sizes. But with medium density, we want to leave uh, two spaces either side. Otherwise, they might start growing this way, which is not what I want to happen. Once everyone's grown in, we'll add those two extra spaces on the side. And we're getting some commercial now as well. So again, I'd like people to kind of drive down this commercial main street here as they come into the city. So uh, also give me a name suggestion for this town as well, because I imagine we're going to be more involved in kind of a county build. So I need a name for the map itself and then a name for this particular town that's being developed today. So two name suggestions from you all, please. And this is fine. Let's go ahead and keep zoning up and have a larger commercial high street here. This should be okay. Let's definitely get some commercial on the corners here too. Fantastic. Got some of that industry demand spiking as well now, haven't we? So let's come into our industry stuff and we'll start zoning up. Yeah, again, ideally I'd like it to be facing these alleyway roads, so let's prepare that to happen. Let's go ahead and get all this zoning up. 
So the new um, depth you can go to now is um, six, six deep for a, a building to grow. So you can now go from four by fours to six by sixes if you like. So not looking too bad. I think I'm gonna come do some more tree work. So let's go ahead and get some oaks. We'll come onto our tree brush. So there is kind of a way you can get a forest brush to work here. But you want to do a sweep of one tree that you want the forest to be made up of. Then come back and say do some spruce work. A couple of wild green hedges. Different variants as well if you can. Let's get a couple of pines in there as well. And before you know it, just after a few sweeps through with the tree brush, uh, you're going to be having this cute little forest, which is a little underwhelming right now. <laughs> but once they grow, uh, you will be able to notice those forests a lot more. You'll be able to see them more over here, right? Cool. So things are growing. I do hope this crane animation is tweaked at some point. It's a little overly dramatic for low density housing isn't it i don't think they really use tower cranes for building small residential homes but that's all right I'll look at some of our new assets here absolutely wonderful so we're going to name these first initial wave of sims after our uh, longest and highest supporting patrons so thank you for all your support guys this first person is going to become joshua t it has been an egg yolk patron since the 5th of May 2021. Thank you so much for all that support, Josh. You are a legend, my friend. We're also going to follow Josh as well so we can see what he gets up to. Got another person here as well who is going to be named after Kendai, who has also been an egg yolk since the 5th of May 2021. And we'll see what Kendai gets up to as well. Shaky Snake has also been an egg yolk since May 2021 as well. So we're going to go for Shaky Snake this time and we're going to follow this person. It looks like the person next door to Shaky is also going to become Michael W, who has been a patron since January 2022. Absolutely insane. So we'll make sure that these guys are all followed. There's a person over here on their dog walk. And this is going to become Mehmet, who has been a very long time supporter of the channel, a patron since July 2021. We're going to follow Mehmet and see what he gets up to as well. We've also got the retired mandalorian <laughs> which is a more interesting name for someone isn't it but big thanks for all your support mando a patreon since may 2021 thank you for that buddy and then finally for today's episode we will do bespi who has been a patron again since may 2021 absolutely insane so thanks for all your support guys we will keep moving down the patreon list every episode and naming sims after you guys so we'll also check in as well and I see what all the patrons are getting up to <laughs> as they move around the uh, kind of egg city. So this should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing how everyone um, sort of moves around. Although Kendai and Shaky are already seniors, plus Michael as well. So they might they might bite the dust before <laughs> the, the, the city gets too old. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, either way, thanks for all support for the patrons. You guys are just an enormous blend of secret herbs and spices. You do a lot for the channel. So thank you so much for all that. So let's keep on top of our demands here. We've got a little bit more uh, medium density demand coming in. And we'll also start zoning that up on this side over here too. Let's keep it all going. So you don't really have to really follow all the demands. You can be quite um, sort of slow in your development, I guess, is what I would say here. You don't have to zone up a vast amount. And that's really what I want to try to do. I don't want this town's footprint to become too large. A little bit more medium dense, uh, low density over here as well. And I'm keeping those lot sizes small so they don't have to pay too much rent. And there we go. Let's go check on that industry as well, see how we're doing over here. So we'll definitely spend an episode getting involved in the production chain, but for right now we just want kind of the start in town to get off to a good foot in here. Get these initial demands satisfied, probably get up to the second or third milestone today. So we do also have our first development point, so let's go ahead and actually grab advanced road services first of all. Again, there is a tutorial up on the channel about what to unlock first and in what order if you're interested in that. So go check that out if you want a little bit of help with that. But this does give us access to the road services menu. Now, I'd love to do a little bit of work down here. So at this point here, I don't want a right turn to be possible because if they want to turn right, they can take the slip road. I think I'm going to be happy with that. Yeah, so we'll leave that there. Uh, I'd also love to start doing some decoration of the main street here as well. So why don't we add uh, grass lining to the outside? Don't want it on both sides, I don't think. We'll have it grass lined and then can we add possibly... 
Yeah, we could add a wide sidewalk to the opposite side of the road there, which I think might be quite cool. I think we'll do that because it's going to stop people from parking on this road because I really don't want them to be parking here. So let's remove that. And then we'll do trees on the grass line a bit as well. Really cool, I think that you can upgrade both sides of the road now. When I first started playing Cities, this was a really hard habit to break. <laughs> Going from having lots of separate road assets to now just upgrading kind of a base road template if you like. So I think you guys will find it a bit of a challenge to get to grips with, but I think once you do get the hang of it, it really kind of opens up the possibilities of what's possible now. Cool. So again, these trees are going to get bigger over time. I think I'm happy with that. So we've also got some services a lot now here as well. We've got our healthcare and deathcare stuff and that garbage collection. But garbage collection will be handled by your outside connection for a little bit. So we don't really need to waste the budget on a landfill site right now. So I'm not going to put one down. Uh, and then... Also, I guess we should, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll just wait until people start whinging of the fact they need a clinic or death care. Yeah, we'll just save the money for ourselves for the time being. A little bit more industry demand coming through here. Let's make sure we zone it up. Go ahead and get some knocking around this way. I'm also really keen to keep expanding this um, river through the landscape as well as we cut up to hopefully link them through together one day. Kind of have this big scar running through the landscape which i think would be cool also gives us an excuse to use some of those larger suspension arches we'll have access to as well as the city grows up but uh, let's go ahead and throw down our med clinic so i'd love this to be kind of on the high street here and a part of the main city strip so we'll, we'll replace that commercial that was growing we'll have our med clinic here really nice asset the med clinic great corner asset as well and uh, we want to make sure we save room for the upgrades as well because we can actually add on a uh, extension wing here as well but once we need it so i make sure not to zone up these spaces here and then we can also have this on here as well can't we but uh, it doesn't need those upgrades yet far from it so we'll have those in there we will eventually need a graveyard again but i'm going to wait till someone actually dies before placing it and we can just hopefully enjoy the fruits of our labor here as the city initially starts to come to life so it's so satisfying isn't it, the start of a new build there we all is. Take a look some taking some of the new commercial. Got Palemi Chemicals here. I'm really looking forward to getting access to the props because the props look really nice. All these little flower pots and vending machines. There's ATMs, street signs. It seems to be a lot more varied props these, these days in Cities 2 compared to Cities 1. We also have a look at some of the industrial props as well, you know. Some of the, the containers, little kind of piles of pipes there, isn't there? There's crates and dumpsters and bins, log planks, etc. So we're really looking forward to getting access to some props via the Paradox mods. I assume it will eventually happen anyway. Wait and see how that turns out, of course. But it's a little bit more low density demand here, so let's keep that coming in. Happy for this to be a low density part of town here. And we will eventually start zoning up with office and commercial around here and whatnot. Should be quite a lot of fun. So a little spike in medium density here, so I'm happy to have some... Uh, pathways here so a really good option for pathway snap is actually to snap to the sides of buildings so i'm going to have this pathway run all along the back of this commercial and come down here as well now i don't want it to create a pedestrian or do we want a pedestrian crossing actually i guess it can't hurt uh, and then we'll also link them down through to here as well let's come onto an angle snap i really want to keep those little bits of walkability going if we can that should be good there and then again, we've got a bit more medium density demand now, so I'm going to zone up here. So we'll have these being a little bit larger homes while they're closer to the main street. So we'll zone all these up. Just prepare that medium density to come in. Looks like we can also zone these remaining tiles on the edge there now as well, now the middle's grown up. So let's have a little look at some of our uh, European medium density. Quite nice, isn't it? I do like it. I do find, as I've been playing, that the European assets tend to be a little nicer than the North American ones, but we will use both in this city, I think. All these back garden props here. One thing that does irritate me a little bit about this is sometimes they won't grow to their full depth. So we'll have to unzone one of them. And then wait for it to grow in four deep and then zone the other one. You can see where it happens occasionally. It's not the biggest annoyance, but it is going to trigger me when I'm trying to get a proper pattern in. <laughs> so we will fix that. So there we go. There's our first uh, waiting for her symbol. So that's a good time to place our graveyard now. 
Um, so I'd like a little bit more breathing room this side. Let's open up some of our initial tiles. So this one, this one, and this one feel like sensible choices, first of all. So we'll grab those. That's going to open up a little bit more room for expansia. And again, we'll go ahead and grab our terraforming tools first because I want to see what sort of landscape and place in my graveyard on because this is such a large asset it's going to really cut into the terrain. I'm just going to force this layer back a little bit and again just re-soften it out so it blends in a little more naturally. Now I'm not going to keep terraforming all the time we will eventually rise up these little foothills but when I'm placing smaller assets here like or larger assets like the cemetery I want it to be um, a little flatter for that. So where do we want to put our cemetery here? Let's have a little look where it might be quite nice. Eventually this is going to be density, so I don't really want a graveyard here. So I think maybe just on the kind of suburban part of town might be a good shout. We can treat it as a bit more of a central part design as we build around it. So let's have that there. Now this guy is going to need a place to turn around, so we will provide a connection straight across there so they can do that. But that will give us a graveyard now, and I think what we will do now we've got this in is begin to um, surround it. Oh, you're not going to come out there. That's okay, though, because the new uh, road tools are just so fantastically flexible. We can actually snap to the side of a building here around the edge of the graveyard, which we will do. And as we come towards this junction now, it should not really matter that we're not aligned because it will just create the junction for us. Almost like node controller. And then I want to do the same thing down here as well. We'll leave a little bit of green belt space here as well. Don't want everything to become zoning. So let's have our pathways crisscross through the middle. Something like that. And then we'll get some smaller wild green bush. A couple of poplar trees in there. Some spruce as well. And then wait for this little tree garden to grow up. Be nice when we get some benches to further decorate spaces like this as well. There we go. So placing those two assets has um, really spiked up those demands, hasn't it? But again, don't feel like you need to rush to meet them, you know, because things are going to upgrade and further satisfy those demands as well. So we'll have a little bit more commercial around here. Perhaps up until where the eventual medical clinic will expand to as well, we'll have that on the opposite side of the road. Now, if these pedestrian crossings here start to get too busy, I think what we will do is introduce an elevated uh, crossing here and actually turn off the ability to cross on these roads. We'll kind of see how the pedestrian traffic affects it as time goes on. See some of these larger European medium densities growing up now as well. It's already getting very busy, isn't it? Look at all this. Lots of people parking on the street. I wouldn't mind doing some more road upgrades, actually. So let's come in with some... Uh, grass lining and I think we'll line all sides of this road through here and I think we'll also continue this trend down the corporate system as it goes into downtown as well maybe not all the way down though not particularly near the industry maybe just kind of around where a lot of this commercial space will lie we'll keep it growing up around here too really want to create kind of a main street kind of town centre vibe around this couple of systems people pass through town here. It'll be quite a lot of fun I hope. Now I could go for a repeated tree pattern here but I think what I'm actually feeling is to come onto a smaller tree brush. Let's go down to about size 10 I think and a relatively low strength maybe 50. And then I just want to paint with the brush through the middle some trees. Don't want it to look too landscaped. So let's have that. We'll run this all the way through here. We'll also do that with some wild green bush as well. And then maybe a couple of spruce trees in there too. That's going to grow up. Our demands are starting to come in now. There's a little bit more medium density available there, isn't there? So let's uh, go ahead and zone that up this side. We'll switch the direction of these houses now as we come back towards the main couplet air system here. We're starting to develop this little neighbourhood already, aren't we? We're looking forward to getting to autumn so we can see a lot of the... Autumnal trees, by far and away my favourite of the seasons. Really looking forward to getting to that. But uh, why we do have the expansion here, let's go ahead and uh, bring out our four lane road. This can run straight ahead, which will bring us to a small village, which gives us a couple more development points, which is very handy. Uh, and then we'll also keep this 
uh, corporate system going over here as well. So you can, I don't really want you to run parallel with this main street for the whole duration. So let's come out by 160 meters and then we'll begin to curve this away and it can take a different trajectory to where this other arterial road is going. And then what we will do is just as it begins to break away, we'll provide a connection back into the one adjacent to it. And we can look further ahead down the line to what's over there. Um, I'd love to know actually where our, we don't get to find out where natural resources are yet till third miles and do I think we've got some fertile land over here. So we'll definitely have some farms over there at that point. And then while we're on the topic of some of uh, corporate systems, let's keep this one going up here as well. That can just go straight ahead. It's got so much demand, haven't we? Let's keep those um, commercial demands going. So let's get some, got some apartment blocks here now, haven't we? Some medium density apartments. Uh, which I'm not averse to having in already. The town's only pretty small. So I might actually try to avoid them for a little bit just yet. And we'll get some commercial zoning going through here. Maybe a little more medium density on the main street here using some of the larger spaces. I think what we will do is actually come back and grab an alleyway here. Just come off of that couplet tool. And then really want to snap into these zones around here, I think. Start to create some zonable space around these areas this through as well these tiny roundabouts can also be quite welcome when you're using these alleyways as well they're kind of nice little sort of extra road detailing if you like using the small roundabouts as cul-de-sacs as well at some point as well you know you can use them as a little cul-de-sac if you like but not in this particular case and then we'll use this space here now just to get some more of that uh, smaller density and lower density is the word i'm looking for is it Keeping the zone size is fairly small where we can. Got a big spike in industry demand as well there, haven't we? So let's go ahead and get some more industrial stuff down. Uh, and then I'd like to actually turn my attention toward that elevated bridge over the corporate system after this. So let's get all this zoned up. And you can see now all that pollution starting to blow across the water. Rather than this way, really important that you factor that in when you're planning. Um, otherwise you're going to end up blowing smog all over your citizens and they won't be happy with you for that, as you would imagine. So we're starting to see downtown develop a little bit here now, aren't we? So let's keep a lot of this commercial, again, focused around Main Street here. And I think we might actually upgrade Main Street as well in a second. Uh, into a four-lane divided road. So we'll grab medium. Let's get four-lane divided. And I just want to upgrade these. And probably up to there is fine. Then we'll come back into road services. And I want the grass lining in the middle this time. I think it's just going to give a little bit more importance to this street, isn't it? So we'll do a grass and tree lining right down the middle. It'll help draw the eye a little bit more to this, shouldn't it? Let me you know you're in kind of the main street area now. Really nice sight line down to that water tower as well, isn't it? Very happy indeed. Cool. So we do have our first schools we can now place as well. We can get elementary and high school in. Um, so these are quite uh, similar looking assets in terms of the fact that they... Uh, and almost town hall-y in their design. So if we were to place one of our schools, my aim here is to kind of have them both together so they kind of create a wider school campus is what I want to happen anyway. Again, because I'm placing larger assets here, I want to make sure my terrain layers are friendly toward them. I don't want them creating huge cutaways in the land. This should be quite cool here actually. You see, we're going to start accentuating this layer now. Good time to soften it out and start creating some height differences in the networks themselves, which will really help decorate your cities. So how about we develop our school campuses over here in this spot around the suburbia? It seems like a good spot for me. So let's have the high school be the dominant one. So if we were to place this here, now just for the aesthetic loveliness of having it centered with the school, I think I am just going to move our graveyard over a little bit here. That's a pretty much central there, isn't it? And again, I want to make sure I've got room for uh, the chapel and whatnot to come in here too, and the mausoleum. Although the mausoleum only gives attractiveness, doesn't it? I do find some of the modular upgrades to be a little underwhelming in what we actually do for the city, especially while on the medical on this school as well. But we'll get to those later. So let's have our high school here. We'll make sure we provide all its connections for it. So we could already give the sports field upgrade for this. How much is it? It's not too bad, is it? I don't think. So we'll have this here. We'll get that in already. 
and then I'd love to have the elementary school now essentially sat as part of the high school campus but possibly about here I think yeah so we can have that there you see now how these buildings they just kind of really complement each other don't they it's having them nearby and then we can upgrade this one as well to have the playground again which I think will help and then let's go ahead and grab our pathway now too and I want to hug the sides of the building of the uh, high school here all the way around. I want people to be able to walk that full distance. Now let's go for right there and then we'll bring it off into this one as well. And basically off at every other right angle where the um, it would make sense for the path to kind of peel off from. And now we can complete these road frames to link them with each other. Fabulous. We have a parking out here or some sort of park maybe once we do eventually unlock them. But uh, that's going to give us uh, both education levels at least that we can afford right now. And I guess it'd be fun to start developing maybe a little bit of height around here. So do we want to possibly explore the introduction of an apartment block for the first time on the corner of Main Street here? Don't think I'd be terribly averse to that I think. So I just have someone complain of a high rent but it immediately went away. We do have a few not enough customers over here as well, but we'll peter out. I think with the warnings at the minute, there is still a few bugs within the economy and the way things run, so we wouldn't worry too much about them until we kind of get a patch at least, I think. So we can click on our Park Street, which is the main one through here, and see the dip in traffic volume at uh, 6 a.m. there. Really comes down, doesn't it? But it still has really good traffic flow on it for right now, which is good. We don't want any traffic problems here. So yeah, I mentioned doing that elevated pathway, didn't I, which uh, I really wanted to explore. So let's decide which one we want to use. I'm a big fan of this covered pedestrian pathway. So let's come up to 7.5 meters, which is, I believe, what you need to cross a road. That's kind of the minimum height. Let's come from this. Can we snap into grid orientations here? No, we, we want to be kind of snapped in the middle, really, don't we? Let's go right over the top there and then we'll line up with the next one. So we have something like that. And then we'll snap into existing geometry. And then do I just want to come straight down here? It's a little steep for what I want for right here. So we'll come up to make sure we're coming back down to earth. So we could go for that one there. That actually kind of lines up with the main street in the park here, doesn't it? So we'll connect that right to the end. What's that distance of a... 112 meters pretty much and then we'll connect in some side pathways too give them a little tree to decorate with something that will fit in you have to bear in mind the tree collision radius now as well which is something we're going to have to get used to at least until our mod takes away that functionality anyway i imagine it will at some point cool and then we'll come back up to here and we'll descend again by 112 meters if we can manage it oh exactly <laughs> exactly that distance uh, and there's no real reason there actually to come to the sides because there's only pedestrian crossings at the end there. Again, we'll do uh, another couple of pines either end of it. Something like that. And then we'll use the advanced road tools here uh, to remove the pedestrian crossings um, off of the main street. Because I don't want pedestrians on this road. If you do want to cross here, then you have to use the bridge. This way we're going to give priority to the traffic. And it shouldn't slow down. And then we could also actually come off of the sort of middle snap point here as well, couldn't we? To create some further crossings, which I think we will do. If we come up by 32 meters either side. And then we'll come back down to earth. And we'll make sure we'll snap into that angle. And then where do we want to go to here? Let's do a, we could mimic it again, 112 meters, but I don't want to do that side, I don't think. I think we'll do 64 here. And then we'll connect over this way. And then same thing again this side. Come down by 64 meters. And I think we will add pedestrian crossings at these pathways on the bottom, so they can get back into to either side. That isn't on the main junction where the cars are. And also see here as well where we want to set up wide sidewalks on these streets don't want cars parking here at all eventually what we can do once we get the district tool we can set up a uh, on-street parking fee 
which will stop them from, well, it won't stop them, but they'll pay for the privilege of parking on the road, basically. Cool, so now I've got this big pedestrian skywalk in town. That's going to be a real feature of this town, I think, isn't it? That pedestrian way there. So I want to see if we can do some uh, designs with our medium density stuff on the entrance into town here. So I'm going to position some alleyway roads to hold um, essentially four by four blocks of this apartment stuff. I want to create perfect four by four squares like this. So we'll do a few of these. That should be enough, I reckon. And then we'll come down into this frame over here. And then we'll also connect into this one as well. And then just want to fill these 4x4 grids now with um, medium density apartment stuff. Just to kind of help them stand by themselves. Rather than having them blended into kind of an endless expanse of density. We'll also bring some pathways across here as well. The tower is so loud, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry if that was murdering any of the headphone users. It was a very loud water tower. Cool. And again, I think we'll do a little bit of a tree brush around here. Go ahead and get some oaks growing. And we'll do some spruce as well. So we'll wait for those to grow up. Let's see if there's people using my... Oh yeah, so we'll do it for that now. There you go. We're using the pedestrian crossings. Absolutely wonderful. I love these new pedestrian covered ways, even though it is raining through them, which defeats the point of them. <laughs> Whatever. We'll have a, a little bit of covered pedestrian pathway. I'm a big fan of the new covered pathways. Or the new kind of path bridges, I guess. Uh, they are a lot of fun. And that does take us up to Large Village, which unlocks us a whole bunch of stuff. We get livestock farming now. Uh, fire and rescue and police administration and whatnot. And uh, some service budgets as well, which we can start messing about with our services now. So we're definitely paying too much of death care. We want to bring this down. To make sure we're not losing too much capacity there. So yeah, we've got three sick or injured and we're paying for 100 capacity. So absolutely more than enough. And then same thing again with... Education, let's bring this down to maybe 60%. And the same thing with water and electricity, I imagine. How do you have electricity? Not so much electricity, but definitely water can come down a little bit. So let's bring the budget down. So we can up the service fee. So the service fee is something that the Sims will essentially pay to use the service for. So by bringing it down, the fees come less, but it makes your citizens happier because they have to pay less money for a water service fee. If we bring it up, you get more money, but your sims become much less happy. And the company efficiency also drops as well. But so does water consumption. So this is a fun little slider to play with. It's not that impactful, but you'll see what it does down here when the bottom right as you hover over it. Put it up, sims become more unhappy and efficiency decreases as well. But for right now, I think a 80% drop in budget should be okay. It's going to help us save a few pennies, but you can see now... There's very little monetary challenge in the early game in Cities 2, I've found. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that develops anyway. Uh, but let's do a little bit more road services here. It's kind of hard to know when to wrap these episodes up without <laughs> the, usual, the usual detail in time lapse. But uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll get there eventually. So again, we'll have some larger homes knocking about on the main street here to satisfy some of that row housing. Get that growing up along this street as well. It should be quite nice, shouldn't it? Now, I guess we can also actually do our first fire station here too. I don't think I'd be totally against that. So there's a fun little thing I like to do with the fire stations. So if you kind of have a look at it, it looks sort of like a church, which I think we can use to our advantage to help detail a suburb here. So let's come in with some alleyways and we'll have this go straight up here. To look something like that. Now I want this one to cut straight through to the next one. Because I want some um, zoning here. And then I'm going to put down my fire station there. I'm going to bring my road to fully encompass that as well. We don't need so many pedestrian crossings here either. Let's turn some of these off. There we go. So yeah, once you've kind of got it down. It has to be said it does look a lot like... A fire station, doesn't uh, like a, a church, doesn't it, I guess. So again, we'll bring that one down there. So if we position it within a suburb, we can 
uh, do some quite nice things with it. Let's go ahead and surround it with some housing. The major here again, just kind of stick into those smaller sizes where possible. And then we'll have a little bit more medium density growing up here, I think. And being careful with where it's allowed to grow in so we get the patterns that we want. And then this will surround the fire station uh, with houses and kind of make it look like a little community church, which is, a, I think, a fun way to almost repurpose the asset, I think, isn't it? So we'll have this all around here. It can come in on a few different angles. And then again, we'll just do some light tree detailing outside of it. Some oaks in the corner should be quite nice where they'll fit. And we'll do some bushes around those. Wonderful. These trees will become a lot more impactful once they grow, I promise you. You know, from the right angle now, at the right distance, you can definitely kind of appreciate that little spire, almost as like it's a kind of a little church bell tower, can't you? I think I'll be on board with that. Yeah, but otherwise, guys, this is feeling like a pretty good place for a detail and time lapse. So I think what we will do before we do that detail and time lapse, actually, is grab some parking areas. So we'll grab them for two development points. That's going to be wonderful. And then uh, we're going to use them for some detail as well. So I want to fill some of this space behind the commercial paths, trees, and that's it, basically. <laughs> so there's no props. But otherwise, let's do some detailing, and then we'll be right back.
have also noticed that this needs to be one way so they can come off here. Uh, this junction should last quite a while actually so we'll see how it goes before we do any significant modifications to it. But uh, already it's distributing a nice amount of national road traffic that's coming off. And again these are junctions we can upgrade with more kind of fine and refined highway lanes when we do eventually unlock them next episode. Okay guys but otherwise it is going to do it for today and let's thank you all so much for watching. I've uh, done some cute little path and tree work around. There's not too much of a detailing review to do to be honest just because of the current things with the detailing. But otherwise it's uh, turned out into a really fun start. Don't forget to leave me those name suggestions down below as well. And I'm really looking forward to further developing this town as well. So uh, let me know if you're going to build along too. Because I know a lot of you like to build along with the various different series. And uh, there's a whole heap of Cities 2 tutorials and sort of tips and tricks on the channel. Uh, so don't forget to go check those out as well. If you're looking for more CS2 content don't forget to subscribe as well. Because uh, there's going to be plenty more of it. I hope you are enjoying your release. I know it's out this week for those that are watching this as it releases. So I hope you imagine to find some fun in the long, long anticipated sequel. We did actually hit the next milestone for a large village, but this video is getting a bit too long now, so we'll definitely spend some time next episode doing some park stuff as well. I think we'll go ahead and unlock that. And then we can have a look at public transport and really just slowly grow this town out over the next few episodes. I'm really looking forward to spending more time in Cities too. It's definitely a game I found myself enjoying the more hours I put into it, so I'll bear that in mind if you're kind of picking it up and you're not a little bit sure about it yet. I was the same when I first started playing. Massive shout out to all the patrons that make these videos possible. You guys are a real secret blend of herbs and spices. And a shout out as well to Patreon Felix Wilkinson. Don't forget to check out the instant gaming link too. Really helps support the channel and it's dead cheap. You'll save yourself a fortune. Otherwise I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.